So I binge watched Ratchet on Netflix. Ratchet, the show starring Sarah Paulson. And it's pretty dark. It's pretty, pretty dark. Um, Ratchet, Nurse Ratchet stems from one flew over the, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. That's not like I'm drunk. One flew over the cuckoo's nest, the movie with Jack Nicholson, which is from the book. Um, Ken Casey, someone, some sort of hippie from the 60s wrote the book. And uh, she was the nurse. This is like the prequel of it. And uh, you're dealing with, uh, you know, mental health in the late 1940s, post-World War. You got lobotomies. Um, you got a lot of stuff going on. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's one of those, uh, it's one of those shows, um, that, uh, you can binge watch. You can really, really binge watch. You'll get stuck in it, but it's not very uplifting. It doesn't make you feel good. It doesn't inspire you. It doesn't make you want to be a nurse. No, it doesn't paint nurses in, uh, the right light, but it goes into her and her family. She's got this brother who's, who's, who's murdered some people and, uh, he's in an institution that, uh, she so happens to work at. And it's got a lot of layers. And I got through it probably in a weekend. I had a, I had one of those rare weekends where you got nothing to do. So Ratchet on Netflix, a lot of violence, a lot of sex. Um, you know, the forties is when uh, my sweet grandparents grew up and they're, you know, they were so, uh, you know, so, so pure and everything. The nice old people to think people behaved in uh, such horrible fashion back in the forties. I mean, you know, mankind's always been awful. Everyone wants to say, you know, hey, the past few years things have gotten awful with, uh, you know, the obscenities and the decency. It's like, no, there, there was no decency ever. A ratchet, a good show. Uh, not something you'd watch with kids, obviously. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of sex, a lot of violence. And um, it, it's eye-opening um, about uh, mental health and how it was dealt with in the past. Bratchet on Netflix. Again, I binge-watched it. You may have stuff going on in your life. I don't know. So the big election coming up on Tuesday, Super Tuesday. You know, Super usually goes with, like, Superman, something good. There's nothing good's going to happen. There's two sides of the spectrum. One will be very, very upset. We probably won't get a definitive answer that night. Who knows when we will get a definitive answer. You think with all the mail-in ballots and, and early voting that uh, we would know who's winning. And I think they're saying Biden's winning, but that's what they were saying with Hillary back in the day four years ago. Seems like 30 years ago. So, I mean, Walmart's already not selling ammunition and guns. And let's see what else. Um, there's some stores in the regional area that are boarding up and getting ready for any civil unrest. And, I mean, there's civil unrest on, on both sides, you know. I mean, there's going to be a lot of uh, angry people if Trump loses that are going to, you know, they're not going to behave. They're not going to be adults about it. And in the same thing, there's going to be some people very, very upset if Biden loses. So probably, like, don't go to work on Wednesday <laughs> yeah, because, like, half your office... I mean, depending on where you work, it's going to be really upset. Like, if you worked in L.A. or something, like, everyone's going to be crying if Biden loses. If you worked, like, in, in Alabama or Texas, well, I don't know if they cry there, but they'd be, like, firing their guns off in the air or something uh, in some sort of solemn protest of, the, of Trump losing. And then, you know, the change of power, you know, the questions of Biden's competency. He was saying stuff about going against George Bush when he's obviously not running against George Bush. I mean, a lot of criticisms of Biden, even hardcore Democrats. They wanted Bernie. You know, they wanted the socialism. And, and Biden's not that. He's got too many skeletons in his closet. No one gives a shit about Hunter. No one cares about what Hunter did. I mean, they had some guy come on and do some press conference about Hunter doing this and then making $3 million. There's some video of some prostitute jerking Hunter off with her feet. No one fucking cares about Hunter Biden. They hate Trump. They're going to hate him no matter what. It shouldn't matter what your kid does. I mean, you know, if I have some asshole kid and I'm running for president, it shouldn't matter. Now, I know, like, uh, Biden's being accused of making money off this shit and everything, so I get it. You know, it's a big deal. But nobody cares because they hate Trump so bad. You know, just like they don't care about Trump paying seven fifty in taxes because they hate uh, Biden so bad. Um, it's ridiculous and it's not going to be over. And I don't know. I thought I read there's going to be like an asteroid that's going to hit that night or hit Halloween night. So hopefully that happens instead, but probably not. And I guess I also read an asteroid is going to hit us in 2068 for sure. 
So just got to get through the next 48 years, 47 years. It'll be all over, right? <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully we'll be living on some other planet by then. But yeah, you know, debates are completely useless. You either know who you're going to vote for or you don't. No one's going to be swayed by that. And if you are swayed by that, you probably shouldn't be voting because there's something wrong with you. I mean, seriously, come on. It was just a shit show and everyone got their popcorn and wanted to watch two old men fight. That's what they wanted. Dude, my mom was getting in my face the other day about getting a flu shot. And I've gotten flu shots uh, my whole life, except for the past three years. And I'm not like, you know, being, oh, I didn't get the flu. So, I, I you know, I'm immune to it because I'm not. And I understand getting one now, especially with, with COVID. But I just, I don't know. Something inside me is just like, just don't do it. Something's telling me not to do it. I don't know. I don't know, like, I feel like I'm against it now. And I'm not an anti-vaxxer, not at all. I saw a kid, a uh, picture of a kid with smallpox. I mean, I don't want that. Who wants that? Who wants oh, any of those the diseases that, like, wiped out people in the 1800s? I mean, come on, like, polio. I mean, get your kids vaccinated. I don't get it. You know, you listen to Jamie McCarthy? I mean, she is attractive still, so I probably listened to her, like, in a loud bar, try to make out what she was saying, but nothing about vaccinations. I mean, come on, seriously. All right? How many times have I said seriously? Seriously, that's a lot. I don't know. Uh, but I don't want to get the flu shot. Something tells me not to do it. I don't know. It's just that thing inside me, that brain or something, whatever makes me like talk, saying don't do it. So get get a flu shot. You know, even like where I'm like, uh, you know, employed at, they're like bringing in flu shots. So I get that away from me. You know, it's just, I don't get it. I've never been like this. I've never had this feeling before. I don't know how you feel about this with uh, with the flu shots. Do you get them? Do you not get them? I don't know. So I watched Borat 2. Did you watch Borat 2? Okay, on Amazon. I mean, okay, first off, it's free, so everyone can quit complaining about that. If you have Amazon, it's free. It's a free movie. And it was free. So I think it's uh, as good as a sequel possibly could be. I mean, that was an iconic film that had people imitating that movie for years, and it was also, like, deep about our culture and racism and xenophobia you know he tried to do the same thing with bruno which wasn't as big of a hit but i thought it was pretty funny too and uh sasha baron cohen he's uh he was in uh he's on the uh the trial of the chicago eight or chicago seven i know uh i know it was eight but then uh the black panther guy got removed from it so i think they changed the title to seven i don't know you gotta see the movie he plays abby hoffman so he you know he's in a serious movie like that aaron sorkin film and then he's in Borat 2. And I got to say, it was good. It was good. It had me laughing. It did the same effect that Borat 1 did. Not the same effect as Borat 1 was, you know, original. I mean, he wasn't original. He was doing uh, the skits on the Ali G show as Borat. And he was doing appearances as Borat. But he's been doing the character for Borat a long time, before the movie. And, you know, I didn't know that. I don't think anybody really knew that. People knew who Ali G was. But, you know, Borat 2. You know, the thing with Giuliani, I mean... Here's the thing with Giuliani. is It is embarrassing. It is creepy. But he's 76, a young woman coming on to him. I missed the part where she said she was 15. I've heard other people say they missed that part. That was one of the accusations. You know, was he being creepy? 76-year-old guy, young girl coming on to him. Whatever, you know. I mean, it is embarrassing. It was, See, the thing with him, I noticed, with uh, the LG show and the first Borat movie, where there were like kind of more skits and the, the his latest stuff, uh, Who Is America show on Showtime, and it even started with Bruno is more cringe and more just really uncomfortable situations that just make you go uh, um, with less of the ha ha humor stuff. And I think Borat too was like that, but it it brought back some of that ha ha stuff because he's just such a lovable character. But, you know, him running in on the, the Pence thing, it was what I thought was the most remarkable thing was Pence just talking about the COVID-19 thing and how he was basically wrong if you fast forward to now. But I enjoyed it. I thought it had some great moments. Um, was it perfect? No. But for a sequel, especially a sequel to a movie like that, it was pretty damn good.